the death of George Floyd took place thousands of miles away in another country, under another jurisdiction, and yet we simply cannot ignore the depth of emotion that has been triggered by that spectacle of a black man losing his life at the hands of the police. In this country and around the world, his dying words, I can't breathe, have awakened an anger and a widespread and incontrovertible, undeniable feeling of injustice. A feeling that people from black and minority ethnic groups do face discrimination in education, in employment, in the application of the criminal law. And we who lead and who govern simply can't ignore those feelings because in too many cases, I'm afraid, they will be founded on a cold reality. Yes, I'm proud to lead the most ethnically diverse government in the history of this country with two of the four great offices of state held by a man and a woman of Indian origin. And yes, I'm proud of the work I began to lead more than 10 years ago to recruit and promote more young black people in the police and other walks of life. This country has made huge strides. I remember the 1970s and the horror of the National Front. I, I truly believe that we are a much, much less racist society than we were. In many ways, we're far happier and better. But we must also frankly acknowledge that there is so much more to do in eradicating prejudice and creating opportunity. And the government I lead is committed to that effort. And so I say, yes, you're right. We're all right to say black lives matter. And to all those who have chosen to protest peacefully and who have insisted on social distancing, I say, yes, of course, I hear you, I understand. But I must also say that we are in a time of national trial, when for months this whole country has come together to fight a deadly plague. After such sacrifice, we can't now let it get out of control. 